another force that we have to make sure we fully understand is the normal force. Uh, the normal force is fairly straightforward the majority of the time, but there's about 10% of the time that we have to be very, very careful and not make a very common misassumption. Uh, so the first thing we should do is just kind of define the normal force. So normal in mathematics just means perpendicular. So really the normal force is just the perpendicular force. It's any force from flat surfaces, and as we stated, it always acts perpendicular to those surfaces. So whether you have a box sitting on the ground, well in that case the normal force pushes straight up because that's perpendicular to the ground. If you were shoving something into the wall, well the wall will, you know, Newton's third law, the box pushes the wall left, the wall pushes the block right, and that force is gonna act perpendicular to that surface. And if you have something on like an incline surface, like a ramp or something, again, you still have that normal force and it acts perpendicular to that surface. So if you can get in your mind the idea that normal in mathematics means perpendicular, then you just realize anytime you're in contact with a flat surface, draw a line perpendicular from that surface and that would be the resulting normal force. So if you hear the term, just know generally we're talking about the ground, but it could be any kind of flat surface like a wall or the ceiling. If I push something upwards into the ceiling, then the normal force would point perpendicularly downward. All right, so that's the first thing we have to understand about normal force. The other thing is that the normal force is what we generally consider to be our weight. It's what you think is your weight. Um, and what I mean by this is if you imagine you jump off of like a cliff, you're going to dive into the ocean. As you're falling, and you might have experienced this if you've ever you know, been in a trampoline or maybe you know, you've jumped into a pool or something from like a high dive, uh, while you're in the air, you actually don't feel your weight. You get this weird sensation of like weightlessness, right? It's that weird feeling in the pit of your stomach as you're falling through the air. You don't feel your weight. You're just kind of free falling. Uh, and that kind of tells you that you can't actually feel the force of gravity on yourself. Because if you jump in the air, you don't feel anything. Yeah, you might see yourself go upwards and get pulled back down, but you don't feel that force. What you do feel normally is your normal force. So people, you know, say like, oh, I'm tired. My feet are killing me. I've been on them all day. Yeah, well, gravity's pulling your body down. What you feel all day is the normal force from the floor pushing up on your feet. So what we feel and what we think of as our weight, you know, with the feeling of weight is actually the normal force. It's actually the the resistance to the weight, actually. So normally, if we look over here on the left, usually, usually we're not accelerating. Usually we are just kind of standing at rest or maybe we're accelerating to the right or the left, but we're not usually accelerating vertically. We're not usually accelerating off the ground or down into the ground. So 99% of the time, maybe not 99%, I think I just made that up, but a lot of the time, uh, your normal force is equal to gravity because you don't have any of this acceleration. So because this acceleration here is zero, that means your normal force and gravity must have the same value. So most of the time, you can kind of say, yeah, your normal force and gravity, they're basically the same thing in terms of the size, the magnitude. However, let's use these elevator examples. If you've ever been in an elevator, you've likely experienced that weird sensation when the elevator first starts moving. Uh, where you get like a weird feeling in the pit of your stomach. Uh, and it's going to be different whether you are moving upwards or downwards. So let's take a look at this. If you are accelerating upwards, well, you still have gravity, right? You still have gravity acting downwards. And you still have your normal force from the bottom of that elevator acting upwards. Same thing in the, in the third case where you're accelerating downward. You still have gravity acting downwards. And you've got your normal force, maybe not drawn that large. You're the normal force acting upwards. The difference here, the difference here comes from the acceleration. If you are accelerating upwards in the second case, well, that means your normal force must be larger than your force of gravity. Now, again, the weight hasn't actually changed. Fg is the same, but your normal force increases. So what you will feel is the sensation of feeling heavier. So if that elevator accelerates upwards, for a brief moment, you will feel like you are heavier because what you are used to feeling is this normal force, but you are now feeling one that has to be larger to overcome gravity and get you accelerating upwards. Alternatively, if you're going downwards, again, gravity has to be larger than normal force because that's the only way you get downwards acceleration. Just like previously, the only way to get upwards acceleration is if your upwards force is larger. Now again, this does not mean gravity increased, okay? It means that the normal force decreased. So if I wanted to draw this correctly, gravity would be the same size as it was before, but really Fn should be a little bit lower. So I would do something maybe like that. 
that is a sensation of you feeling lighter. You get the same sensation on a roller coaster, depending on whether you're going through a loop or over a hill or down into like a, you know, a depression in the track. Uh, you're going to feel lighter or heavier based on what your normal force is doing in terms of which way you're accelerating, upwards or downwards. The key here is it is your normal force that's changing. Normally it equals the force of gravity or your weight. So anytime it has to be larger or smaller to make your body accelerate upwards or downwards, you get this weird sensation of feeling heavier or lighter than you actually do. All right, so just to recap, sensations of changing weight. You will feel normal, right, your usual, if Fm is equal to Fg. So you will feel your normal weight if the force of gravity is equal to the normal force. That's what happens as you're sitting in your chair, as you're kind of walking around horizontally across the earth. Uh, if you want to feel heavier, though, however, if you want to feel heavier, then your normal force has to be greater than Fg. And that would be a situation where you would be accelerating like upwards. Okay, so your normal force has to be larger and you will feel lighter if Fn is less than Fg. Again, I do wanna be clear, I'll try and draw it correctly here. These two should be exactly the same size. Even though I'm drawing two dashes there, it's actually your normal force that will decrease. Okay, the force of gravity is, is pretty much fixed, right? Earth is gonna pull you down with the same force. Your normal force, though, could certainly change depending on which way you're accelerating. So if you understand these three conditions, you should be in a pretty good boat. All right, let's look at a couple examples and set you guys on your way. So we have a person who has a 90 kilogram mass and they've got a, an acceleration of three meters per second squared upwards. So the first step is gonna to be to draw a free body diagram. So if we go ahead and do that, we know in this case, we've got FG acting downwards and we've got FN acting upwards. Now we know they're accelerating upwards, so FN has to be greater than FG. We can write our F net Y equation. It's very similar to the F net X, but it's in the Y direction. So my F net in the Y, well, I've got FN going up, I've got FG going down, and of course that can equal MA in the Y direction. Now I'm just gonna plug in my known values. So F net Y equals, well, FN we don't actually know. Okay, FN is unknown, but we can find FG because we know that that's going to be mass times 9.81. We will assume, of course, this is on Earth. My mass here is 90 kilograms, and I'm accelerating upwards at three meters per second squared. So Fn minus, uh, let's see, 90 times 9.81, but 882.9, and this is going to equal 270. Add 882.9 to both sides. And you will find that the normal force in this case is 1,152.9 uh, newtons in the upwards direction. All right, for part C, uh, well, didn't ask, do you feel heavier or lighter? Well, in this case, Fn, which is 1152, is uh, greater than 882.9. So therefore, this person will feel heavier. And it makes sense because, as we said before, there must be more normal force acting upwards in order for them to accelerate upwards. All right, we'll look at another one here. Uh, now they're going three meters per second squared downwards. So we'll do the free body diagram. We've got FG, we've got FN. We know that FG must be larger than FN because of this downwards acceleration. So we're gonna have the same F net Y as our previous problem. We've got FN going up, we've got FG going down. And of course, Newton's second law says that must equal MAY. So I've got FN going up, which is unknown but I know that uh, 90, my mass, times my acceleration due to gravity, 9.81, equals 90. And in this case, we're going down, so it's gonna be negative 30. Uh, so of course, I forgot what my previous calculation was, so Fn minus 882.9 equals negative 270. Add 882.9 to both sides. And we're going to find that Fn in this case is equal to 612.9 newtons in the upwards direction. This person, of course, will feel lighter because that is less than Fg. Fg is 882.9, that is less, so this person will feel lighter. 
All right, you can give this one a shot yourself. Uh, pause the video, see how you do, and you can unpause and check your answer. All right, so let's draw a free body diagram here. Let's see here. We don't know which direction it's going in, so I'm just going to write FN and I'm going to write FG. And we don't know which one's greater, so I'm going to leave that for right now. My F net Y. Well, I still have FN going up. I've got FG going down, and that's going to equal MAY. Uh, so let's go ahead and let's figure this out. So we'll do FG, which we know is going to be mass, times 9.81. So 85 times 9.81. So the course of gravity, the weight of this person is 833.85 newtons. And we know that they feel two times heavier than usual. Well, usually... Fn and Fg are equal if you're not accelerating. So that means Fn is going to equal twice that number because that's what they would normally feel if they were not accelerating. We're being told they feel twice as heavy, 833.85 times 2. So they are going to have 1,667.7 newtons. Now we know that normal force is greater, so we actually can go ahead and realize that in our free body diagram, the normal force is larger because they feel heavier. Uh, and now I can go ahead and I can plug everything in. So we've got 1,667.7 minus 833.85 equals, my mass is 85, my acceleration is unknown. So this is going to be 833.85 equals 85 times my acceleration divide both sides by 85 and this person is accelerating at a rate of 9.81 meters per second squared upward. 